Hello, everyone. We're good to go. All right, we are on the Cloud Native TV recap, CubeCon style. A legend, the Babe Ruth of what we do. I'm so excited to do this. I've been talking about this for, with you for a long time. Stu Miniman, welcome to Daily Recap on Cloud Native TV. Well, Pop, I really appreciate you having me here. It was great to be on uh, the Popcast with you uh, before. And yeah, it, it, it's funny. I'm walking around this show and everybody's like, oh, Stu, the Cube's here. I'm like, well, yes. The cube is here, but actually, I'm not the cube anymore. So I've been, you know, working for Red Hat for a year now, and everybody's like, "Oh, but do you still do the cube?" I'm like, "You know, the cube's not like a podcast or a side hustle or things like that. It's, you know, I was an analyst, and it's a media organization. You know, we had clear disclaimers as to where money came, and we did a lot of shows. It's like, yeah, no, on my side, I'll just, you know, go to 30 or 40 shows a year and do, you know, hundreds of interviews and stuff like that. No, no, that was a full-time job. I was humping it." Uh, for a decade with them. Love those guys. It was great. I was on again today with Furrier uh, and talking about what's going on. So, yeah, it, it, it's interesting here. You know, I'm on the vendor side, which meant I did a bunch of media. So it's like, oh, wait, my face is going to be out there more at these time of events. But uh, it, it, it's, it's been fun. Nice. So, everyone, um, I have to do the disclaimer. I kind of forgot to do that real quick. So this is a CNCF uh, broadcast. Please, we, we follow the code of conduct here. So please be kind and wonderful to each other, each other in the chat. Interact with folks. We have a jam-packed day today. We have uh, we have Brad Giesman and Duffy Cooley uh, from Sig Honk. They had a talk today. Stu, you know where they, they they're awesome people. Um, we have Caslin Fields here. Priyanka is going to be here. Stephen Augustus. You know Stephen Augustus? Yeah, absolutely. Stephen's little conference. That's what we call this thing. <laughs> um, okay, doesn't everybody at the show know Stephen? Everybody knows Stephen, and Vijoy will be here as well. So we're all streaming and people coming in. Oh, wait a second. Honk, come on in, yes. Duffy Cooley, welcome to the show. Everyone. Brad Giesman, welcome to the show. Stu? Duffy, nice to see you. Yeah, the, 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 the hat with a rim is a little bit challenging with yeah, that. Yeah, indeed. So you could probably put it on top if you wanted. Oh, maybe. <laughs> we can try at least. See that? Gotta be Sage, on, you got to be on brand. Sage-like advice from this <laughs> a guy not, who's done a yeah. lot of these, so he can kind of give the uh, headphones advice. All right, so fellas, I mean, who wants to go first in terms of talking about, like, you know, the, your, your talks are always phenomenal in terms of keynotes and whatnot. So, so who wants to second away. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a blast. My, um, I really enjoy, like, we, we spent some time this year uh, kind of exploring kind of a Run-C vulnerability that was, uh, well, made every version of Run-C before RC95. Um, <coughs> uh, exploitable and it was actually a really interesting challenge because we were trying to come up with a way to kind of map what we had learned about the run C vulnerability in uh, in run C to doc or to Kubernetes right because like that that is vulnerable is one thing but uh, but like how can we actually do this with Kubernetes how can we do this with an orchestration layer and that was the challenge before us and so the four of us got together we spent about I think 10 10 14 days something like that kind yeah. of hacking on it and got it working and then there was much honking <laughs> and we actually just presented kind of our work around what that was and some of the key takeaways are, you know, really dig, you don't don't give up on stuff like this. If this is actually something that's interesting to you, just keep powering through and keep trying stuff until you find ways to, to you know, exploit the world and, and figure it out, you know. Nice. Brad, what's, I mean, what's your take, dude? Yeah, um, that talk was born out of a team effort, right? So we're, we're all looking at it from different angles. We're working together. You know, Duffy has knowledge about things. Rory has not backgrounds that are looking at it from different angles. I don't yeah. think we would have solved it without Probably that. Probably not, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, you know, you get stuck and you sort of, like, throw it over. And then when you have your team that's like, oh, yeah, no, I know that. I can try it from this angle. And we eventually got it working and then, uh, you know, operationalized so it's more reliable. Hey, that's all good. Well, it, 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 it's funny, Brad. You know, this morning in the keynote, Priyanka was talking about Team Cloud Native. And yeah. for people that don't know, it's like, well, come on, we all have our jobs, we have things to do. But this community, I mean, very much yeah. is built on, I, you know, I know I've been in this long enough uh, that people move. Uh, my, my old boss, Dave Vellante, used to say, there's 100 of us in 99 seats and we go round and round. And it's not, <laughs> you that. know, the knife fight of Red Sox versus Yankees. It's like, <laughs> hey, we compete some places, but in this community, we got to work yeah. together. And especially on some of the security things, we better all work together or yep. we're in big trouble. Well, there's the adage there. It's like same team, different company. That's I right. feel it. Yep. I mean, look, yep. you know, like all of us, I, 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 you know, I was the... Um, 
the MC for um, two two sessions was the CN, uh, CN EBPF day with Duffy Ooh. Cooley and uh, the, the Tag Security Day. And it was like, look, the way that I said it was, look, there's no one tool, there's no one project, there's no that that solves all these issues. It's yeah. it's that's what a community is is, is being able to like, you know, yeah. address those things. Yeah, so. and really driving into our community like a culture of learning. You know, what yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing that I I think that that's kind of Brad and I's goal from the beginning. Like whenever we, whenever Ian, Brad, Rory, and I get together, our goal is to really kind of derive that culture of learning into what we're doing. We want people to be able to iterate and kind of lean on the community, get their legs underneath them, and then go out there and thrive. You know, Absolutely. and another thing on the community that was really kind of amazing me so far here at KubeCon. Um, this is the first in-person KubeCon. We missed it. We missed a couple. We've been yeah. virtual and and kind of uh, strug you know struggling to connect. I think a little bit. And so it's been kind of a high emotion, kind of a really in, uh, an in intense feeling that I'm getting kind of from the community here at this event. Right. It's been a great it's been a great session. And I also have been I've been really fortunate to meet a, few, a bunch of great folks who are like this is their first KubeCon. And I was like, wow. Yeah. This must be an amazing first KubeCon because it's like it's not super crowded. But all a, a bunch of people are here, and you get to spend like really good one-on-one -on -one time with them, and at the same time, well, like yeah, Duffy. I mean, they don't realize if they'd come to San Diego, oh some of the gosh, people that right? you have like, access to here, yeah. they would have been in wall-to-wall -wall meetings. Forget about it. Yeah. You might get there's people that normally I'm like you'd bump into them, and like I have five seconds to say hi before they run off. Exactly. You can stop and talk yeah. for five minutes. I got a little bit of leeway. It's you know big Absolutely. convention center, but you're, you're right. It the the, the the hallway track is back, and yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. it, it's so nice to have all the people and be yeah. able to have a little breathing room. Too. Yeah, it's also really good to see the virtual ones still going strong, right? Like this, yeah. the sig, the, the the hallway track in the in Slack is also just alive and well. I've been seeing all the applause for the talks and the support of everybody there. So I'm really glad you're here, whether you're here in person or whether you're here virtually. I'm really I'm really glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. So. Go ahead, Brad. You would say something, but I was going to say, like, uh, you know, doing a talk in person today, yeah. also with Ian Coldwater, my co-presenter. Uh, you know, shout out to Ian Coldwater. Yeah, Ian, uh, you know, just being in the energy, the room's energy, it's 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 really refreshing. You know, yeah. because you're seeing the interaction and the questions after. Yeah, I didn't know how much I missed that, uh, but also, you know, just just the excuse to be silly and poke around at things and misuse things and. You know, share that knowledge. I th yep. I th you get it back in spades, and that's why I love doing it because you get that that back from the community. So, one hundred percent, no doubt. And um, it's also, like I said, it's good actually going out and kind of seeing your friends, grabbing, you know, a seltzer, a soft drink of some sort, yep. and you know, just being able to just fraternize. It. And and I we I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I want to ask just kind of this the last question for you all, and and that's like, what are the things like you're looking forward to this week? Hmm. I mean, for me, I think it's really just been kind of getting reconnected. You know, I, I, I was personally definitely struggling with like really feeling disconnected from the community um, in this last, you know, 18 months of the long dark tea time of the soul. And so for me, uh, I've really been feeling very energized. I've been talking to, I, I don't consider myself necessarily an extrovert, but I know I, I'm more of an ambivert. I can kind of go either way. But I can definitely tell that a lot of my extrovert friends who I'm actually getting to see here at this event are really like, those batteries are getting their first charge in a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really great to see, like, you know, th that happening. Well, 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 Duffy, one of the things, <laughs> you know, I, I think back to the 2019 show, yeah. like, most people hadn't heard of EPBF. That's true. And when, yeah. when I think about the life cycle of what has changed in the technology space and what's going on with Cilium since yep. we were here in person, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, it, it's a lifetime or two. Yeah, we so. just did a whole EBPF day, and we have, like, many other great things planned for next year already. Like... EBPF is really taking off, and I, I mean, I, I personally moved to Isovalent during that whole uh, long dark tea time of the soul and have been really kind of immersing myself in EBPF and that whole space, and it's been really refreshing. Like, uh, I think I'm, I'm used to, when entering into, like, a new technology like Isovalent or, or Cilium, I spend a lot of my time explaining, like, what it is and why it's interesting, and instead I find that I spend a lot of my time listening to people telling me why it's interesting and telling me why it's so it's so compelling and and that really tells me uh, you know exactly what you're saying right like we've kind of gotten to that point where the zeitgeist has happened people have really seen the value of it and they really want to engage now and Cilium is a great way to engage there and, and even you know shameless plug for falco right if you yeah. look at ebpf now seeing that apple was yep. is using you know exactly. falco yeah. and, and all that and it's it's a triumph and i remember the day that john luca barolo you know from from sys they get like put together like literally how to do you know captures and some of the stuff with ebpf driver and i was looking at this and i was like 
this Woo. technology is yeah. well, and then i have Groff on the podcast and Thomas Groff is brilliant, absolutely yeah, is. a brilliant yeah. human being. And, like, I was like, this Cilliams is a, is a great thing. And also having, having you there, one of my yeah. best friends, I'm like, uh, by the way, shout out to Cilliams on uh, Incubator Project. Um, you yeah. Know, clap on that. Just announced right? today. Very, nice. very cool. I mean, well-deserved, an amazing project with, ama you know, amazing technology. So kudos to you all. Brad, I'm going to ask the same question and go over to you and say, like, what are the things you're looking forward to this week? I think I can sum it up with just saying face to name. Yep. Uh, you know, in the last two or three years, it's been forced remote, you know, uh, communication. And I need to see the name and the face put together, and I can make that connection a little bit better. So for me, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Technology-wise, there's a lot of talk about, of course, eBPF, but it's yep. accepted. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a known quantity and doing amazing things with it. Um, but, you know, s software supply chain is huge. Identity yeah. is huge. Uh, and I'm very curious to see where people are making practical solutions of a previously very difficult problem. You know, where do I establish trust out of wa the wild? How do, I, how do I rein that in, but still get the value and the velocity out of open source, right? And so when I see projects that are doing, you know, step in and levels and, and uh, you know, with Salsa, that you're, you're easing into it, that is an approach that I'm excited to see, you know, successful, honestly. So, Brad, I have, I'm going to go off script and ask a question to you. Yeah. Um, do you all know what a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup is? Oh, I don't know if you know, oh, but yes. Brad, Brad's uncle. Yes, I do. <laughs> Brad, Brad's <laughs> uncle actually invented the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Is that right, Brad? Can you please corroborate this story? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> all jokes aside, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to spread that myth because he told me once that he's, he's actually yeah. from the uh, – from, uh, well, from Hershey PA. From Hershey PA. So yeah, there you that's go. awesome. Yeah. yeah, family worked in the in the business. So if you've had a Reese's Cup somewhere in the late 80s and 90s, the peanut butter. Thanks. For See that on. investigative reporting I do, yeah, Babe that, Ruth? That is, it, that, is, uh, that is really impressive because that is one of the best candies out there. Yes, so. it is. By far. And Absolutely. with that. Sig Honk, thank you for so much for thank being you. on the Daily Recap show. Yeah, appreciate it. it. Might yeah. see us again in the next few days. All right. All right. Thanks, all. Cheers. Salute. All righty. See, the hits keep on coming. We, st I mean, what do we do here? Uh, this is this is. Uh, give, I don't even know. Like, how do we segue into the next well, one? Well, you, well, you're a pro. I need to understand this. Pop. So, so you talk. You know, one of the things looking forward is funny. I know a lot of people in this community, but I tell you, for me, like, I got to meet a lot of coworkers, people I've only seen on you know Google Meet and Zoom meetings and you know a million email trails. Yep. And, and you have all the. It's like, oh wait. That person's taller or shorter, or th th things like that, or you get to build rapport uh, and, and talk about things like that. So I want to ask you about this because yeah. yesterday you also did the open open shift comments. Yeah. I want to plug that because again it was great. I actually walked in. Uh, I was consistent. Got a booth in there over there, but kind of. Yeah. So so it's funny. We we actually did a hybrid event, which was really interesting because one of the things we always do. So open shift comments, in case the audience doesn't know, is a community event. Really talk about things they're doing, and at its core, it's 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 practitioners. So. We wanted users to be able to speak, and we had, uh, I think, four or five different presentations for users. All of them were remote, wow. but we still brought them in. But we had people on stage. We had some great speakers. Clayton Coleman, yep. uh, you know, was up on stage. Sasha Rosenbaum, what uh, was up was up on stage. Uh, many of them, uh, so, and, and we did lightning rounds with a bunch of the partners. But switching between on main stage to hybrid. A couple of minor technical glitches. You know, yeah. you understand streaming, you know, yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, RTMP had like a 30-second delay and then <laughs> sorting some of these out. But for the most part, it went well. And, yeah. you know, I, I think it was a great experience here. Hybrid is here to stay. Yes. I mean, you know, great to see where they were announced where we're going to be in uh, Valencia and Detroit next year. I don't know if next year gets back to as big as what we had before. How long will that take? Amazon reinvents only going to be fifteen to twenty thousand later this year. So yep. hybrid's here to stay. You know, it's nice. We don't necessarily have to go in person, but you can go build relationships. I mean, I love just in the morning I'll sit down at a table and you know meet some people that you know you never would have met online or you know in, in a chat. So yep. there, there's there's that. Um, but yeah, Commons was awesome. We had. Good attendance, people engaging online and in person, and just being able to you know soak it up and learn new things and meet new people is. It was it was fantastic again in terms of the knowledge that was given. And also, like you said, this hybrid platform is here to stay. So with that, um, our next guest here is Caslin Fields, who's a developer advocate uh, with Google, and um, she had a keynote today. So. Come on down, Kaslin. It's the first time I've, as and again, we talked about this earlier. It's the first time I'm actually seeing like, one of my dear friends, like one of my favorite pen pals. Uh, so welcome to uh, the Daily Recap, uh, Kaslin, with your cape. 
Awesome. Yeah, we flew in. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. Hello and welcome, everyone. <laughs> oh, wow, I can hear myself in the headphones. That's great. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, do you want the first qu question or you want you, or you want me to handle it? So, so, so Kaslyn, first, great job on the keynote and, and love some of your artwork. I love the, the mixture of creativity and technology. Tell, tell us a little bit of how that fits into your work. Yes. Oh, I love it. Um, as I was just telling a few people earlier, people are asking me what I do here, and like we're all trying to get to know each other. So a lot of people ask about hobbies, and I'm like, well, I do art. <laughs> and one thing I was telling everyone is I have way too many hobbies, and the only way I can have that many hobbies is to combine them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of how I got started combining art and technology. And another reason I do it is because it's really boring to look at really dry diagrams all day. <laughs> it can be really hard to communicate technical information in a way that's fun and will stick with you. So I wanted to use art to make technical information more eye-grabbing so that it'll stick in people's heads better. Yeah, thank you. Death to the stock image. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, before I get into my question, I want to just make sure that folks are also following cloudnative.tv. Um, again, we, we are honored and privileged to have our, we had our 4,000th um, follower during KubeCon. Uh, excited because, you know, we, we, you know, we built this all together. See, there's Kaslin's show. She has a show on <laughs> Cloud Native TV. It's called Fields Tested. So my question to you is this, is, um, you know, talk to me about your keynote. Tell me about the inspiration of the keynote and, you know, how do you feel it went today? Yeah, so a fun fact <laughs> that I think a lot of people wouldn't know because it wasn't clear this time is actually that was Google-sponsored Keynote. <laughs> As Diamond sponsors, they got a slot in the Keynotes and uh, just a five-minute slot. And so the powers that be, whoever is in charge of deciding these things, said we want someone from the community who knows what they like and knows what they want to give this Keynote. And so they gave it to me, which I was amazed and super excited about <laughs> and humbled by. <laughs> and so I said, great, this is Google's keynote. What do you want me to say to people? And they were like, eh, you're the community expert. Do what you think they'll like. <laughs> and I was like, OK. <laughs> So I worked with some of our folks who work on open source. Big reveals on the daily <laughs> recap today. Big reveals, everyone. Yeah, See so that investigative <laughs> reporting stuff? <laughs> so I work with the folks who work in these SIGs and work on these projects for open source. And I was like, I want to tell people about your work. And that's what I did. <laughs> Incredible. And, and so like, I, you know, my, my question to you is, is, again, in terms of like keynotes in general, like what do you think makes a good keynote? Ooh, this was my first time giving a keynote, yep. by the way. Yep. So we'll uh, classify it with that. <laughs> but I have watched a lot of keynotes. And <laughs> I told this story on Twitter. Uh, one thing I was really excited about with this keynote is when I was first starting to go to conferences in about 2016, 2015, something like that, um, <laughs> I was amazed at the, the pomp. <laughs> the hype at tech conference keynotes mm -hmm. they'll play all of this exciting music and there will be all these flashy lights and then they start talking about databases <laughs> and i always thought it was a bit of a disconnect and so when i was watching these one time i turned over to my mentor and i said you know one of these days i'm going to be on that stage and i'm going to earn the hype <laughs> Oh, you definitely brought the heat today. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I got you know I'm a, I'm I, you know I'm like your biggest fan. Like you know oh. that. Like like I literally like will print out the you know the fields test and put it on the refrigerator. You know like oh. like you know so, but you like would. I you, you know I would. But but like again, it's it's good that like again your your awesome like abilities are being like highlighted out there. Like in you know it's a it's a privilege to see it. Like you know, and a be, common thing yeah. among really great keynotes is the passion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about people showing off those abilities and the things that are they're great at and that they love. I think that's what makes a great yeah, keynote. Yeah, and Kaslin, you're so right because uh, you know if you get the right person, they can make databases interesting. It's yes. not just you know columnar <laughs> versus this and that and everything, but you know that's why this community. I mean, let, let show your inner geek. You know, yeah. really enjoy that, thrive in it, and maybe that will connect for the, for the audience. Yeah, I have a friend who anything he talks about, if he's passionate about it, do not care. I'm going to listen all day long. 
<laughs> that's how I kind of figured out, you know, as long as you're excited about what you're talking about. And it might be something you didn't think was exciting at, start, at the start of it, but if you have to talk about it, maybe you figure out a way to make it exciting to you, and then it'll be exciting to everybody else. <laughs> I ask you this, and you know, same question we asked before, and that like, you know, what, what are you looking forward to this week? Ooh, uh, what all is going on this week? So I have another one session here at KubeCon. Uh, it's a panel where I'm working with Kunal. You know Kunal? Uh, Never Kushwaha. heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> also on dot .edu, .edu. <laughs> uh, on, also on Cloud Native TV. Follow, please. Yeah. Uh, Smash that like and subscribe. <laughs> and also Bart, who uh, has some exciting things going on with who us Who also well. has a show called Art is Code. It's not up there yet. It, no, I think it is. Is it? Yeah, right there. Oh yeah. my gosh, it is. Yeah. Yes, Bart and Kunal and Chris Short, who does not have a show up there, but he does like podcasting. He does so many different things. Yep. So we're all members of the contributor community here in Kubernetes, and we all really care about getting new people involved. So the panel is about teaching people ways that they can get involved that they might not have thought about at first. A lot of people think, oh, I have to know how to code in Go. I have to understand all of this stuff about Kubernetes to get involved. You don't really. There's a lot that you can do. Kubernetes is giant. <laughs> so there's a lot of different skills that are needed and a lot of different activities that we need to have done. So. Uh, we want to have lots of different types of contributors, and that's what the panel is about. And then uh, Google has like a, a virtual <laughs> booth on Slack, so I'm checking out the Slack environment. I love that because it combines the virtual folks with the in-person folks. Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> interesting because Google does not have a physical booth we here don't. at the show, but you have quite a number of speakers here. You've also got your own virtual event uh, going on at the same time. So, uh, yeah, a it, it, little bit interesting uh, to see because, you know, Google usually is uh, a pretty uh, large on-site uh, yep. participant here. We had an awkward uh, timing thing with Next being at the same time and everything, but we're still here doing lots of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm online with the Slack channel talking with people on there. So yeah. the panel yeah. in the Slack. I'm, I'm curious. How <laughs> we were talking just a bit about this being hybrid and yeah. reaching that audience and participating. You know, you want to talk and meet and with everybody here, but you also need to feed that audience. How, how are you finding the, the hybrid nature so far? Because it's something we need to learn about. Because we've done virtual now for a year and a half. Now hybrid is like another relearning. Yeah. It's very interesting. I was very curious how it's going to go, and we're only one day in, so I think there's still more to learn here, definitely. <laughs> but so far, I've been impressed with, like I was talking to some folks in the showcase, some people felt like it was kind of empty, but I really felt like there was a lot going on. There were a lot of people walking around, those conversations that we've missed during virtual, where you just run into somebody and you start talking about what's on their shirt. I see you must like Boba Fett. <laughs> Thing. Mandalorian. I don't know. I'm not that. All right. the Mandalorian types. All absolutely. the Mandalorian types. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you just have these random conversations with people, and that's happening here, which is really exciting. This is the way. This is. The see way. what I did there? I did. Oh, see what you did there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My comedic timing is a little bit off. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> um, but the virtual folks are who I really want to hear from right now. Like, how is this conference going for you? I've heard several people here saying, I kind of want to do a mixture. I want to be in person for some stuff, but I want to watch some of the talks online at home so that it's less commute time or just a little bit more convenient for me when I'm getting ready in the morning or whatever. So folks are appreciating the, the options that they have, even if they're here. Um, but I'd be curious to s hear how it's going from a virtual perspective. Yeah, I think, again, that's the one thing, like, being able to reach out. I think, folks, we talked about it earlier in the hallway track is just going into the channel and being able to say, hey, what's going on? People are applauding people's talks and keynotes, which is great. But also, you think about it, Europe, Europe folks, because of this, probably, you know, it's it's hard for them. They're probably watching, watching the recaps after versus, like, yeah. being live. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we want to check in on those folks and to make sure that they're they feel part of part of it. So... Any shameless plugs before we let you go off and <laughs> enjoy the parties and all the fun stuff? I already talked about my panel and the uh, the Google Cloud Slack booth, virtual booth stuff. Uh, of course, we already talked about Next going on at the same time as well. I'm trying to think if there are any other exciting things for me to plug. <laughs> GK has been doing a lot of really cool stuff lately. Definitely check out the Google Cloud blog if you want to see that stuff. So I'll plug that, I guess. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> well, again, super excited. 
to have you on the show and thank you so much for your awesome keynote and <laughs> go off into the night and enjoy yourself. Woo! Yay. It'll be fun. <laughs> Thanks, Cass. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Action packed day already, Stu. I mean, Dream come true here. Dan, Dan, I am sensing a theme uh, with, with some of the guests here with the, the, the backdrop here. Um, since we got a second here, yep. um, I, I, I need to put you on the spot. Oh, no. The Cloud Native Community Cookbook. Tell us a little bit about this and, uh, you know, your, your, your own recipe that you have here. So the awesome folks at Equinix Metal, um, a project in the CNCF called Tinkerbell, um, they kind of have this Git repo where they, you know, said here's the recipes for, um, you know, stuff. And, and so I actually put in my cacio e pepe, which is like, it's basically like Italian mac and cheese. And so, I mean. It, it's like the signature dish if you go to Italy. Yeah. It's like, you know, the fresh made pasta, you know, it, it, it's like a very simple but classic dish. And, and like I said, it, if you have simple and good ingredients and you just combine them in such a way that's like, you know, easy and all that, but it's literally like four ingredients. It's like, you know, olive oil, well, more like five, but, you know, and, but I, I have in here, if you go into the thing, I'm like, don't be using like the craft mac, you know, the craft cheese. You got to go for the good stuff, right? And I think I said I'll I'll kick you all out of cloud native if you do get the cheap stuff. But you know, it's 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 a, it's a wonderful thing. This whole thing is, I mean, it's great. There's stuff from Andy Randall, um, folks from like Container Solutions. Um, you know, it's it's literally the who's who in the space. Um, I just loved being part of that. So, yeah. so I, I need an autograph. I will autograph it. Yeah, right there. That'd be awesome. Yeah. This is great. Again, one of my heroes is asking for an autograph. One of my heroes. Like, I'm, let me I'm talk about this, right? Everyone says, and I've had him on the podcast, episode 50, everyone, at Podcast Pop, if you want any more details. But um, I've had Stu on, and the man is a legend to me. And, and I've learned so much from you in, in, like, how you, you know, even being here and watching the little th stuff that you did, I was like, this, this is like a dream come true for me. So I thank you so much for being on the show. Oh. We, so. we, we talk about community pop, yep. and it, it, it is, you know, shows like this where I've had so many people that have watched videos that I've done, uh, lots of people that I have interviewed over the years here. It's about I learn as much or more from them uh, as they do. That skill set of being able to sit and just be natural yeah. and just kind of go with the flow, it, it takes some time, and yeah. you understand, and you learn. And, you know, I watch lots of media people and things like that, and luckily I had some, you know, production people, the people behind the scenes that watch there. It's like, if you ever do video, listen to them. <laughs> they know what they're doing. It's right. like, hey, you're doing that weird thing, or you've got this verbal tick, or, uh, you know, they will give you feedback on that, no and doubt. then you, you you work to adjust it. So, like anything else, it can get better over time. But, uh, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. So, hey, a um, couple of folks. So, there's a couple of folks that are running a little bit late. So, uh, I have somebody that's actually joining us from, um, he. his name is Adrian Goings. And he's from Rancher. He's going to come on and talk to us a little bit about his day um, here at, at KubeCon. Uh, Adrian? He's going to come on up. So, I, he, I, I don't know. Is that a? That's a one-wheeler. That's a one-wheeler, wow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not familiar with the one-wheeler. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know a couple of people that do the one-wheeler, so... Uh, oh, you're, you're bringing it on stage. Okay, he's bringing it up here. You, you never know what's going to happen we, on we the Wait, wait, we can have props. Can... I would have brought my little, <laughs> so, you know, my Star Wars droid that I made this week. Hey, hey, good to see you. So, yeah, so... so Break the stage? Yeah. So, it, so state your name. <laughs> Say my name. My name is Adrian Goins. So, so Adrian, and, and what company are you with? I am with Sousa, formerly of Rancher. So, so talk to us about you know KubeCon in general. Like, what are you enjoying about you know being here and all that? I think, like everybody else, I'm enjoying it being in person again. I mean, I know all of you who are watching out there, like you're not here, but maybe you are. The in-person stuff is nice. It's a smaller event, so it almost seems cozier. Um, you know, we can all complain about how it's not mobbed like it was at previous times, but I actually find that the conversations that we're having are more sincere and more genuine, and there's fewer people just like doing drive-bys at the booth. Well, well yeah, Adrian, that was one of the things. You actually have a little bit more time, and yeah. the people that are here, you can you can actually have a conversation, not the usual, okay, I've got 20-minute blocks of, you yeah. know, running from person to person, and there's a line of people at the booth. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's also, it seems less gimmicky. 
Um, like I remember at previous events, we had like spin the wheel to win some swag just so we could get a line of people at the booth. And now it's like people are genuinely interested in what we're talking about. All in all, I, th I think it's a much more positive experience. And in terms of like, do you feel safe in the spot? Like again, I you know Priyanka talked about it in her keynote earlier this morning. Um, you know, do do you feel like you know the the proper steps have been done? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was at the open source conference in Seattle a couple of weeks ago, and that was the first opportunity to really experience what the Linux Foundation was doing with the ClearPass and the vaccination stuff. And I felt. I felt unsure going into that, but I felt better almost immediately after attending it, and I knew that this was going to be amazing. I find that overall the participants have been, for the most part, participating um, in all of this stuff, but, but the general consensus, I think, is, well, my personal feeling is that it's absolutely safe. No doubt. And what, what are you excited about, some of the stuff that, that Susie's doing right now that you kind of want to share with uh, Stu and I? Oh, my gosh. Uh, we have... <laughs> There's so much going on at SUSE that I'm not even aware of, but the stuff that I'm most excited about are the innovation projects related to the new open source things that we have coming out. So somebody was asking me earlier, of all of the stuff that's going on, what what is the most interesting? Uh, Rancher Desktop is amazing. So that's uh, Kubernetes on your desktop, and they just integrated that with Nerdy CTL, so you can actually get almost a, a Docker CLI compatibility from Containerd. Uh, Kubewarden, which is uh, admission policy, inside of Kubernetes clusters using WebAssembly. So you can pre-compile your policies as binaries. You can use the same one in all of your clusters everywhere, in dev, and QA, and production. They're considering making like a hub for that, so you can actually download policies that other people have built and, uh, and then get the acceleration that comes from community sharing. Um, if I had to pick one more, I'm trying to run it through the list in my head. Apinio is also pretty cool. Apinio is a new, well, there was Rio. For those of you who know Rancher, there was Rancher Rio, which was really cool until they stopped building it. And then it, well, it was still cool. Opinio is kind of the, the evolution of that. It's a developer-targeted push solution. So I don't know, you call it a framework or whatever. You deploy it into a Kubernetes cluster, and then your developers can just literally push their code. It'll build, it'll run, it'll link everything together without them having to necessarily understand what's going on behind the scenes or you know, the stuff that developers allegedly don't even care about. <laughs> They're like, Kubernetes, nah. So, so um, let me ask you this in terms of like, what are you looking forward to doing during the week uh, for for Qcon? <laughs> I am a, I'm a booth slave. <laughs> I I come to events. I so I'm doing live streaming from our booth, and the partner people, bless them, put me back to back from ten thirty until five every single day. I get like two half hour breaks. Uh, so the things that I'm most excited, I'm, I went one wheeling to the Hollywood sign. I wish that I could go to other things that are happening actually at the event, but it's just, it's just not going to happen. So, hey, Stu, you got any questions for? Yeah, I, I guess Adrian, it, it's interesting. You know, I mean, I, I've known uh, Shang and Shannon since you know before the Kubernetes days. Rancher, you know, started out in, in the container space. It, it's interesting. Like the desktop product is, you know, sounds like an opportunity with what Docker made changes in, in, in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, how much, you know, is some of the tooling just focus on developers versus, you know, building Kubernetes and all the other projects on top of it? I think, so it, I feel, as the opinions I'm about to state are my opinions, they're not the opinions of my employer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel that Kubernetes, and I've been saying this for a while, Kubernetes is almost a commodity at this point. So we've all, like, there's no differentiation in deploying Kubernetes clusters. There's there's less differentiation in making Kubernetes accessible and and Oh God, I can't even say, I was going to say flattening the curve, but that means something else now. <laughs> it used to be, I talked about the learning curve of Kubernetes was almost vertical. And so what Rancher was doing was, was trying to, to soften that so that you had the ability to use Kubernetes without necessarily needing to take the time to learn it. You can learn it on your own time. But even that now, it's like, okay, people know how to use Kubernetes now. So the, the story that everyone's telling is, is the developers. Like, oh, the developers are this, they're these mythic beasts in the forest that nobody knows what they want. And I don't think that that's necessarily true. Um, I think that, that we need to get Kubernetes, we need to really play on the Kubernetes as a commodity. We need to make it so Kubernetes is so easy to use or that people are so comfortable using it that, that they can leverage its power in whatever way they want. That might be with developers, um, that's, I don't know, there's still an operations story there as well. Um, I just think we need to get more people using it. Like, I changed my LinkedIn profile tag once I figured out that that was actually separate from my job title to say Kubernetes is easy. Because I, I believe that if you, if you tell yourself that something is hard, you're right. 
if you tell yourself that something is easy, you're right. You still will have to do work to learn how to do it, but like all of us who know how to drive, at one point that was an impossible task. Right. But now we know how to drive. It's the same thing with Kubernetes or anything else. No doubt. So any parting, any last, uh, not f that's not a last word. Any it's last words? Any last words? <laughs> no, any any nominee pods, right? Oh, um... I believe that everybody has the power within themselves to do anything that they want to do. So if you have a dream, don't let anybody tell you not to do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. I don't know who I'm talking to or which camera I'm even supposed to be looking at. Don't listen to anybody else. Just do the things that you want to do and believe that you can for no other reason than because you believe that you can and you too will be right. That applies in anything that you're doing, whether it's in this space or anything else in your life. That's it. Profound words from Mr. Adrian Goings. Thank you so much for being on The Daily Week. You're welcome. i got to run. I'm late for dinner. <laughs> All right, see you later, buddy. Thank later. you. Later. Stu, it's been action, action packed today, my friend. Yeah, yes. Hopping, people coming on and off. Uh, your, your, your introduction to the one wheeler. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you, you never know what you're going to get on The Daily well, Recap, Stu. I, 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 in San Diego, uh, the, the, uh, the, the electronic scooters were, were definitely hopping. Uh, I tried them a couple of times in San Diego. No way I would use them in L.A. There's big <laughs> signs on them. Do not use them on the sidewalks. That's the only place they use them here. So L.A., I've enjoyed it a little bit. Um, the weather's been perfect uh, for us here. But, uh, yeah, not using the electronic <laughs> scooter. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Hey, I want to introduce somebody else. So, like, so basically, hey, you all. So, like, uh, Priyanka, Vijoy, and Steven are in a, uh, a board meeting thing. They're coming right out and uh, to be fit momentarily. But I'm going to invite somebody. He's Frederick Coots. He's from Spiffy Spire. He did a really good talk on software supply chain, which, you know, is probably one of the hottest topics here at KubeCon this yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to bring him up. Frederick. Frederick. Come on up. Come on up. You can come up. Come on. Just come on. All right. Maybe next time. <laughs> Frederick, uh, Frederick, you can't come on right now. So, hey, I think we have, let's see, Gary from Cisco will be coming in one second. So, so apologies, y'all. Just like, you know, the way it is, the hustle and bustle of the week. Everybody has meetings, and you know how it, you know how it is. So. It is. The, the, the in and out's coming to the show floor soon, so maybe they're just all getting in line and we're getting ready for that. Double-double. That's what we're doing. Animal so, style. So, yeah. So, I have uh, – this is Gary. Uh, Gary Kevorkian. Gary Kevorkian. I, 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 I've been at many, many conferences with Gary over the years. Uh, it, it, he, he's a friend. It's great to see him. Uh, yeah. We'll get him on for, for et and I. But Gary, come on up. We, we need you. What's that? Yo, we want you on here. Come on, your family. I want to I got to make sure Frank knows when it comes. Okay. All right, so. You know where he's, no worries. Okay. So, Stu, we got to kill a couple of minutes. What do we do? What are we going to talk about here? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about something that's near and dear to all of our hearts. Let's talk about Kubernetes, our Lord and Savior, <laughs> Kubernetes, real quick. So, um, you know, you've been in the game a long time, and you've seen this from the very beginning. What have you? I mean, even with what you're doing right now with OpenShift, which to me is probably, I am a very big fan of what everything that's going on with Red Hat. I, I think OpenShift is is great from enterprise perspective and all the things that you all do. Talk to me about the evolution. of Well, it, 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 it's interesting, you know, but building off what Adrian was just talking about. It's we want to talk less about Kubernetes. Something I'd been saying at this show for a number of years before I joined Red Hat is we better be talking more about cloud native than we are about Kubernetes because it's the ecosystem, it's all the other pieces, it's everything we can do on it. And oh, by the way, you know, something a lot of our customers are turning to us and saying, oh, and, and when I go to the cloud, you can manage that for me on a cloud service and, you know, great, you got an SRE team, awesome. I can then focus on building things on top of it because Kubernetes is an enabler, it's not the thing. It's like what the internet was, it's like what Linux has done for the entire ecosystem. Kubernetes is great. But it's not magic. It's a pretty thin layer. There's all the other things that it enables and starts on top of it. So that, you know that, that 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 that's what's been powerful. So you know, yes, we still talk a lot about Kubernetes, but you know, right, secure supply chain. Oh my God, I heard that the, the the event on Monday was packed, and absolutely, it's something. You know, we here we 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 had some speakers from the Red Hat side uh, that that are part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, security can't be any more important. It's already like, you know, job zero and everyone is involved, but uh, we, we, we need to watch that uh, software so, so supply chain. Without a doubt. And actually, here comes our next ho you know, our next guest up here, uh, Lackey. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> live. Come on down. 
Yeah. yeah, there he is, everyone. Lachlan Evanson from Microsoft. All right. Running for the steering committee of the Kubernetes steering committee, you all. Please make sure you give a vote, vote to a, one of my dear friends. This, I love the the, the you know cord's Stu, over the thing. The cord is over the thing. Yeah. There, there you go. go. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Do you know Stu Miniman? I do know Stu. The Steve. Babe Hi, Ruth. Steve. The Babe Ruth? The Babe Ruth of what we do. Excellent. Steve. Yes. Yeah, so L L Lockie and I get to sit on a panel tomorrow to talk about what's next uh, in this space. Excellent. Yeah, I'm excited. Phenomenal. Me too. Phenomenal. So, hey, so actually, so again, you ho another host, you had some stuff going on earlier. Um, before we bring up VJoy from Cisco, um, talk to me about what's going on with you. And you have a, you have a keynote tomorrow, don't you? I do. Let's yes, we do. That. Talk about the keynote. Yeah, I think uh, some interesting things if I was to start with the keynotes today. Um, I had the fortunate privilege of sitting in the room, so that was great. I think there were a couple of highlights for me. I think uh, seeing uh, Dorota uh, from uh, AT&T, so AT&T becoming a member of the CNCF was great. You know, that speaks to me having that representation from the telcos coming in. Uh, it speaks to the maturity of the CNCF and, and the things that we're building in the CNCF. So I think that was a great milestone. I felt really good about seeing, you know, that kind of faith in the CNCF and the projects there. Um, so that was a great highlight, you know, this morning for me is, is seeing that kind of commitment from the folks over at AT&T, so c commendable. Um, and I really like Katie's end user. So I love, you know, I was like, oh, there's going to be a virtual keynote in amongst it all, but it really worked. Like the, the production quality was fantastic and, and Katie's message and the new certifications they launched were fantastic. Um, so that was kind of you know, my my two big takeaways. Well, I, I, I still like that you brought that up because that is something, it's been challenging for this event is the end users usually are up on stage and giving a lot of presentations and we were just talking about, we held OpenShift Commons yesterday, we had a few end users speaking, all of them were virtual. Yeah. So that's been that mix of who's in person and who's not. So there haven't been as many end user speakers in the event. But, I mean, that's the driver for this event and this community. It's not just a bunch of vendors making stuff. It's the, the end users are part of it. They contribute. They, they work with all of us uh, in, in the ecosystem to drive this. And that's been one of the great success stories of the CNCF. Oh, absolutely. Can we talk about Tim Pepper's talk? Yes, but, please know, do. We need to talk about that. So, I mean, it so, was... So I saw Tim in the hallway, so I was getting real emotional. And you can yeah. do the setup here for like what actually happened for those who didn't see it. No, but, no, um, you do the whole spiel, man. You know, Tim, Tim actually got up and his message was about being seen. And he shared his personal experience about his heritage, his Native American heritage, um, and how important it felt. He felt like an outsider at these events. So it was all about, you know, building inclusive and being seen and representation. So as part of that, you know, listening to Tim share his story, which he was really vulnerable on stage, you know, um, and I really appreciate that because I can't imagine how challenging that is to get up on stage and share that message. He had um, some some local uh, Native Americans um, from uh, you know First Nations people actually get up, whose land uh, that this was uh, that this event is being held on this part of LA um, get up and do a welcome. Uh, we we call them welcome to country in Australia, but a welcoming ceremony. And we you know it was just it was extremely touching and. You know, I was, I, I said to Tim, I was actually tearing up just seeing, you know, those beautiful cultures and having that representation and seeing them on stage and knowing that, you know, they had this land before it was LA and, and you know, they were here. Um, so it was incredibly touching for me and I, I really commend uh, Tim for taking that, you know, pushing that forward and getting that in front of the, the audience. So kudos, Tim. I, I really am still touched and blown away. And I did see Tim afterwards and told him, uh, you know, you had me in tears. Yeah, it was wonderful. And again, you know, talking about Indigenous people being on Indigenous People Day that we, you know, we have yep. this. And I, you know, uh, props to to Tim for again having just the, the 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 bravery to you know, and also just to be able to be you know so humble and just do being able to just be so so you know visible about this very amazing very an, an amazing cause of, yeah. of of you know folks and, um, and being seen. So yeah, I mean. This week again, we have our, our your keynote is, and we is there anything else that you're looking forward to this week? I mean, so yeah, that keynote that I'm doing tomorrow, beyond, I think it's going to be Olive interesting. Garden. Yeah, I, Olive Garden this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to get to that. I got a reservation. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> they're calling me up on the phone right now. Um, 
You know, the, the story I'm sharing tomorrow, not to spill all the beans, is a story about how the community came together to collaborate on big things, right? And, and this is a, it's, it's steeped in, you know, contributors from all over um, the place. You know, Red Hat's had a massive part in this. Google's had a massive part in this. But it's about a five-year journey to deliver this massive feature set into Kubernetes and everybody, how they had to come together and the power of that strength. So I won't, you know, I won't spoiler alert it, uh, but it's really just, it's more a message about, hey, we can do hard things together. And, you know, this community is super strong. So I, you know, as we compiled it, it was like, you know, that, uh, you know, resilience, that resilience message yep. realized is the message of this conference. And I really wanted to highlight, you know, we are still resilient and we are doing hard things in these communities and they are coming together, you know, these large companies and it's, um, you know, project or uh, project over companies. So I love that message. So hopefully, you know, that'll resonate with folks in the audience. So check it out. No doubt. Hey, do you want to stay on here while we have you join? Sure, I don't mind. Uh, either way, I'm happy to hang out love here or you, here, can, you can kick me off either way. I don't mind. Love to have you here. Hey, Vijoy, Vijoy, come on up. This, this crowd out here, you can see how many people are out there. It's pretty incredible, I know, right? I mean, you just, oh my God. Just how, how are see. you? All right. Come on, have a seat. This is Vijoy Pandey. He's uh, from Cisco ETNI Group. Uh, welcome, Vijoy. Do you, do you know Stu Miniman? Vijoy and I do know each other. Yes, great great to do. see you. Good to see you. A absolutely. We were trading notes on, uh, in case the audience didn't know, uh, t this week actually is the 42nd anniversary of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And for those that don't know, 42 is a special number in it because it is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Absolutely. Just like Kubernetes is. No doubt. I did not know that. And then I had a keynote today which featured Marvin, the paranoid android, from... Oh, so, so, so it was just a coincidence. Just, I thought you yeah. forgot to mention that that was uh, like the, 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 the reason for it because... No, yeah. I did not realize that. So that thank that, you for doing that. That, that is uh, serendipitous. Yes. So well, you mentioned your keynote. Talk to us about the keynote, VJ. I mean, look, you did hey, a little shameless plug on the podcast last week. We talked a little about it. You said you you didn't reveal anything. I pressed, I pulled all of my stew tricks out. I couldn't get anything out of this guy. So tell You're me, you still <laughs> figuring that stuff out. <laughs> so talk, to, so talk to me about like sure. the keynote and what's going on. What's with the ET and I? Yeah. So it's basically so. Yeah, just a little bit of introduction. Uh, we are part of this group called Emerging Tech and Incubation that Constance found pretty hard to pronounce, but I've done it multiple times. It's not that hard, Constance, but, uh, so this group actually is an internal incubator, and we've been working on pretty cool tech, as you can imagine, and one of the pieces of tech that we're working on is around API security and reputation, which is a very relevant topic of discussion all through the conference this time, and the project that we just announced today was called API Clarity, can find out more about it at apiclarity.io, shameless plug. Uh, but it's basically looking at API traffic and reconstructing all the open API specs for those APIs. And then it allows you to take a look at that, make changes, upload your own specs, and then look at drift, look at zombies, shadows. It's just a blessing in disguise, I can tell you that. That's phenomenal. And again, I, I tried to get him. I tried to get it out of him on the podcast, and I couldn't get out of him. And it's incredible. Like I said, it was, it, it, and I, you know, I caught your keynote, and I was like, "Look, that, that this is some, this is substantial stuff that's going to help people." That's what we're trying to do as a community: is trying to help people understand what's going on with this technology, distribute this technology, secure this technology, right? And, so. and that's the way it came came about as well. I mean, we deployed it internally. We figured out a whole bunch of mess inside one of our products. I'm not going to name. Which one? But we thought, hey, this is useful internal to Cisco. It's useful to everybody else. So that's how it came about. So we are pretty excited about it. We have some contributors as well from 42 Crunch and API Metrics. We want others to join in and contribute and grow this. No doubt. Well, listen, I mean, Lucky, you have any questions for, for no, Mr. I, I, I was I was in the audience. It definitely piqued my interest. I think, you know, for folks who already have services that are communicating, dropping this in and getting visibility and actually generating the open API specs, that's incredibly valuable. It's easy to come in and say, well, why didn't you start with open API? But the reality is there are so many things deployed out there being able to drop something in without any code changes. Which developer writes to write, uh, likes to write Documentation. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I just love the, hey, we can version, we can do zombie detection. 
Um, and I just think the introspection without any code changes, just dropping something in on the wire, and when you reveal the, you know, the architecture, hey, you just did a WASM module in Envoy, right? Everybody's yeah. already doing that. We can plug this into the same stuff we're already doing. It's like, wow, how could I, you know, how could I insert this into a service mesh? How can I, right. you know, start to level it up and, and get these declarative API specifications and start to, um, you know, move them over time. So I was, you know, you, you definitely piqued my interest. So you did pull a rabbit out of the hat this morning with that keynote. There so, you, go. you know, I, I wish you all, you, you know, every success with that project. I think it's, it's meeting the need in the community to, to have that kind of introspection. So kudos. We hope so. We hope yeah. so. We also joined OpenSSF, by the way. That was the other big announcement. Fantastic. Uh, Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. Very near and dear yes. to our hearts, the security yep. and, and all of that. So I that's know. wonderful. And um, talk to us the impetus of that. Like, like again, that, oh, we know how, how amazing the OpenSSF is. And if you haven't, please make sure you check out the OpenSSF. But like, what what were the rationale behind that decision? So this was like uh, down to the wire. I mean, I think uh, a whole bunch of people are trying to get together and form this thing, re revamp it to some degree. And I think, yeah, software supply chain, the security of software, especially in it's a, a buzzword. World. I think everybody we should drink every time you hear software supply chain. <laughs> uh, I, know. A, a, I know. A soft drink, okay? Yeah. Not advocating any drinks, but anyway. Yes. No, but I think if you think about how code is being developed, how applications are being developed, it's a lot of gluing together of things right. that exist in open source, from third party providers, wherever. I mean, whatever makes the life of a developer easy and fast, because that's the whole modus operandi. I need to move quickly because. My app needs to be better than the other guy's app, right? So I think if you think about that process, things are missed. Things are dropped. You don't pay careful attention to things. So I think due to all of those reasons, this project, I think, is going to be pretty successful. And it's crucial to all of us. I mean, all of us who are trying to be SaaS players out there in the market, it's crucial to all of us to make sure that provenance, security, reputation, Uptime, all of that is taken care of. Yeah, Vidroy, one of the things that's been interesting is it, for, for a lot of us, it's been 18 to 24 months since we've gotten together as a community as a whole. That, that's like what, you know, six to eight different versions of, of Kubernetes, right. brand new projects that, that have come up. Um, you know, only about, a, a, I'd say, a quarter of the people that I bumped to have, to have changed jobs, including myself right. uh, in, in that time. So tell us when you're working, I mean, emerging tech, that area moves so fast. Uh, what, what, what your viewpoint is to the, looking back 18 to 24 months? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that uh, people said was you can't collaborate when you're virtual and you're locked down. We found just the opposite. So ETNI was formed back in May, June last year, after the pandemic started. And we've been innovating, we've been collaborating, we've been brainstorming, all virtually. And I, I joke, I mean, I think two hours of my commute time I've spent in meetings and collaboration. If we go back to physical, I don't know where those two hours will come from every day. So I think uh, ETNI itself has been looking at projects, incubations inside of Cisco. API networking, API security are the two ones that we've come out with already. Go to etithecisco.com, check it out. Uh, but I think beyond You're that- You're a plug machine and I love every minute ah, of it, man. <laughs> gotta do it. But I think around data, what happens to data and provenance and security of data and how can you drive insights? I mean, I know edge is a badly used, overused word but I seriously think that data gravity and data volume is going to drive the edge. And there are all kinds of edge locations. Think about a car, think about a Starbucks location. We're, we're not gonna talk about fog computing anymore, are we? You know, you might, but I'm not gonna talk about fog computing today. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think data is going to be huge and data is going to drive the edge as well. So we're looking at data management, we're looking at edge, we're looking at security, networking, we are actually looking further and further out. So we have this framework which says, how many degrees of freedom is a project out from Cisco's core? So we started like crawl, walk, run. We started with things which are near and dear to our hearts, so networking and security. Now we are looking further and further out. So we're looking at health tech. We are looking at supply chain, the real kind, not the software supply chain. So don't drink to that. No drinks there. No right, drinks right. there. <laughs> Uh, we're looking at supply chain. We're looking at, uh, again, data, which is pretty far out. FinTech is the other place where lots of things are changing. 
So it's a pretty cool place to be inside of Cisco. I think I have the best job in Cisco and everybody in ET and I has the best job in Cisco. So if you want to apply, you know where to go. So with that, actually, somebody in chat, Java Grunt, saying hello from Kansas City, Missouri, um, USA. Great chat. So I think you know. Thank you. Good, good, uh, you know, good on us, kind of having this chat and talk to being open about what's going on in KubeCon. I want to ask the question here, and that's, what are you looking forward to? I, I was looking forward to your key keynote, obviously, because of the whole build up last week. But what is what is the thing you're looking forward to um, at, Q at KubeCon this week? So I think I mean just uh, we were just walking down the floor today. I mean I think it's been pretty slim, I would say. And I think, uh, but the innovation doesn't stop. So I think if you just think about the attendees, the kinds of projects that are coming in, the graduations that are happening, the incubations that are happening, I think just the sheer volume of innovation and features that Priyanka and others talked about today morning, I'm looking at that and going, this community is awesome, it's thriving. And even though you see the floor, and you think that, eh, where are the people? It's not about the people who are physically present, but it's all the, about the community that is growing. It's about the features that are coming in, the stress around security, the stress around edge computing. All of these things are what I'm looking forward to. Fantastic, Joy. We'll see. And talking to the folks here. Yeah. Oh, Stu Miniman. I mean, look, this Stu is the, literally I'm the Babe Ruth of what we do, <laughs> right? I mean, look, I mean, the Croc Hunter. I mean, oh, right here. Gosh. He's right here. It's uh, great to see you guys. Uh, I'd meet you. No doubt. Same, same here. So, Vijoy, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate Absolute it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, you know, again, the board meeting's fin finished up. We're still waiting for one person to show up. But, I mean, at the end of the day, let's, you know, let's kind of give some Maybe some parting thoughts, I guess. I mean, you know, let's talk about this in general. What is, um, what are the things that right now, that you're kind of, how can I articulate this? What are the things that you all are kind of thinking that we need to? Um, what are some technologies that you're thinking that are uh, that we need to be? Uh, you're, you're looking into as part of KubeCon that you were kind of curious about, like things like Wasm and eBPF. What are some technologies that you're thinking about um, that are cool that you want to look look more deeper into? Yeah, and I think you you kind of uh, you know alluded to Wasm and, and eBPF. I think you know seeing those nascent communities form, and I, I see you know this is kind of a gravity well to to build other communities. And I I loved you know I attended the Wasm day and the Service Mesh day yesterday, um, so I only have context about those two. But um, you know the, these nascent communities rallying around gaps that they see in the ecosystem and and how they can plug into you know, the, the community that we already have. So specifically, I saw the WASM conversation and, you know, they had architectures about how they're going to plug it into container ecosystems and how that fits into Kubernetes. And it's like, okay, they're building things and adding to this, you know, community that we already have. So I think it's great that we're getting all the folks in, in the room together and having them start to build these communities out um, and, you know, fostering that as part of those pre-day events. I think... You know, I would surmise that those pre-day events are going to become equally as big in the next, you know, 12 to 24 months and that you'll see massive communities at EPPF coming up and, you know, WASM coming up and, you know, they will continue to develop. So I think, you know, there's, there's hope and excitement there and people are ready to, you know, get to work. And a lot of these people, it's not their first rodeo, so they're actually coming in, they've, they were brought up and coming up in open source. So now, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is community-based and and they know how to do it. So they're just going to keep building and the rate of innovation is going to con continue to go up. Yeah, the, the, the constellation of these technologies, yep. like there's a whole number n n set of shows happening on GitOps. Yep. Uh, and so, so some of these things start, as Pop and I were talking earlier, there's Kubernetes, but then there's the cloud native ecosystem. So some of these things will spin off, have their life of their own. They play in Kubernetes, but yep. play outside of that. But I, I tell you, Pop, something sitting here, you know, I, I, I've been in the industry a little while here, sitting back and I'm like, I'm sitting here with Cisco, and Microsoft. I've worked with Cisco my entire career. I worked on standards work with Cisco, and for the longest time it was like, oh, well, you know, Cisco's the proprietary one, and then they standardize it for the industry and things like that, but been watching their journey in open source. Uh, we're going to have you Stephen come in and, you know, to talk about that. You know, Microsoft. Right. I mean, it's a, yeah. obviously Microsoft is like the case study now of a transformation, and, you know, Linux and Microsoft, you know, go great right. together as right. opposed to, right. you know, back in the day it was like that was 
was the evil uh, one, one there. So to watch those technologies, to watch us as an industry coming together to solve these challenges is the thing that excites me. It was one of the things that drove me to Red Hat is tech for good, community, mm -hmm. open source. We've got a lot more we can do and some huge challenges there, but together we, we can accomplish it. Right, and I think the evolution here is, you know, around the time that the pandemic was coming up, it was like, well, every company is now a software company. Yeah. And I kind of want to extend that, and every software company is an open source software company. And I think that's where we're going to get to. This is just a way to build uh, compelling solutions to problems across, a, you know, a large group of collaborators. And I, I think that this is going to be the norm, and, and I love seeing these ecosystems evolve. So definitely it's great to have all these folks in the same room and, and pulling in the same direction. So, you know, I'm excited about what the community is going to build going forward. And, you know, it's, it goes without saying, I, I, both of you and uh, to a certain degree myself have been in this community a long time, seeing this evolution that we see here, seeing these booths and, you know, seeing all these. I mean, you, you came from, the, like, the you know, you remember the OpenStack world as well, right? You yeah, know, before yeah. it and, you know, like VM, you know, VimWorld and all of those things which are still going on now. But I'm just saying in terms of just seeing this from, you know, starting, you know, with 200 people in a room to, like, you know, the day of stuff and early Sysdig and all of that. But, like, in seeing this, to me, is like, you know, our baby's growing up, right? Yeah, you know, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this is exactly, we wanted to build, you know, a durable community. It takes on a life of its own. So, you know, it's it's great to see that happen um, by part and large of the efforts of all the individuals that make oh. up the community. You know, they called a few out on stage this morning. You know, the, the, the people who are the pillars of this community and, and they're putting in work to make sure that it continues. So, Well, it, it, you know, back in the OpenStack days, there were sometimes those knockdown drag out fights because... It, you needed to build that stack, and therefore it was like each piece had like an answer that eventually needed to win. And here, it's like you know security. There's not going to be a thing that solves it. And all of these, they they layer, they work together. The API discussion we were having here as to how how some of these pieces can work. Uh, so when there needs to be, there's some consolidation and working. But uh, you know, other times, uh, you know, th th we, we can have uh, let let a thousand flowers bloom. Oh, absolutely. So our next guest is coming down the escalator right now. This is Priyanka Sharma, who's the GM of the CNCF. All right. Oh, excellent. We'll give her a moment to walk over. I do want to say, you know, off the back of what Vijoy was saying, there was, you know, uh, coming to this conference, you know, I think it's a vanguard for you know, subsequent conferences and the fact that we can run them safely. So, you know, being here and being on the ground and for the folks that have been able to attend, I'm, I know that it's not everybody. Um, it's great to see that there's progress in this space. And for me, you know, making new relationships with people and re-upping the old ones and, and getting, you know, some shared breaking bread, getting some shared context together is something that, you know, is still really important. I don't it, think you get the same feeling on a Slack or a Zoom that you have by no, just going, like being, like, you, you know what I mean? No, like exactly. Being I liken it to, like, I put my kids in, in school last year on Zoom, right? At the end of the, if kids the most, you know, malleable set of humans on on the if it's hard for them to do school, you know, we can't expect that, hey, we can all just pivot to this virtual life. And I know, you know, there's a, a world where these things both exist. So I, I still, there is still an important amount of relationship building, whether new or, you know, old relationships well, and rekindling it, it, those. It, and you need to acknowledge, you know, there's been a lot of virtual burnout and yeah. it's been Absolutely. tough on a lot yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. And it's different. Like coming here, my feet are a little bit tired. And at the end of the totally. day, yeah. I'm a little drained. I've been hitting the caffeine, uh, you know, a yeah. bit to come back here where I haven't needed to worry about that uh, sitting at home. Right. So. We've got to learn how to be social beings again, right? We haven't probably interacted with so many yeah. people in such a long time. And, and that's hybrid is here to stay. I'm glad we've got Priyanka coming up because yeah. that is kind of the, the next phase of this. There's going to be some of it. Right, right. When it makes sense, you can come, you know, when it doesn't. And you, you need to do what works for you, too. You yeah, know, absolutely. You, you've got the yellow bracelet there. I mean, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, hey, These are great you know, we signals. By the way, that, that, is, that is a great thing. So basically, it was like, you know, there's signals for it, like if people want to talk to people, um, you know, they have the yellow band or the green and all of that. So here comes Priyanka. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, relinquish. I'm going to say thanks for having us on. Thank I want to give so the much. stage to Priyanka, and I really appreciate it. Have a great conference, thank and, and thank you all online for showing up. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the Olive Garden in a little bit. Right? <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to go get that breadstick order in now. <laughs> All right, Priyanka is, is showing up. Yeah, you come on up. You're right here. Yeah. yeah, we're ready for you. Okay, uh, either seat, wherever you want to sit. Hello, hello. Hello. Can I put this on? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's all so very fancy. Oof. Oh, 
Priyanka Sharma, oh, okay. GM of the CNCF. You, you know Stu Miniman, right? Absolutely. Yes. Great to see you. Hey, Stu. So let's talk about your keynote this mm -hmm. morning. Um, wonderful. Again, uh, one thing, again, you know, a rest in peace, Dan, Dan Cohn. Um, amazing, you know, uh, homage to him. Uh, but let's Thank talk you. about, you know, the, your keynote in general, and then we'll get to the Dan part. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, when I was thinking about, okay, what am I going to do for this keynote? I was like, well, first half is covered. We're just so excited to meet in person, right? And <laughs> that is true. I I had so much to say on that. What you heard was actually the filtered version. So that was, I just really wanted to celebrate the community and the people who brought us together. And so that was what I focused on doing at first. And then it really was, I think, we're at a pivotal point. Actually, we're often at a pivotal point with Cloud Native, so I'm not saying something that's happening only now, but we are at a pivotal point in that our numbers and the diversity of the types of people who come in, in every aspect, right? Whether it's the do job you do, the company you represent, your demographics, everything's getting more diverse. And so I really wanted to do, remind the community that it is essential to remember the strongest power of us, which is the power of our culture. It is how we treat each other, how we bring something of ourselves into this group and then create something new because we can. And we need to remember that as very different people join us. So that was the essence of my keynote. An inclusion aspect, which I think, again, I always say it, I literally say it, we have the best community in the world. And it's all based on, again, the you know, leadership, the support that we have at the CNCF level, all of the projects that are part of this, right? You know, all of the people that are getting involved and all of that. So it just, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So let me ask you this, in terms of this week, what, you know, what are you looking, what other stuff are you, besides the awesome <laughs> keynote? But actually, let's, before we get into that, um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the Dan Cohn Scholarship. Yes. I mean, let, let's talk, let's get, let's get more in depth on that yes so you know um, as folks may or may not be aware Dan not only breathed life into team cloud native he was in everything he did he pursued diversity equity and inclusion ideals and he did that it was almost second nature to him it was if he's doing an initiative he's gonna incorporate DEI into it and I think it was just who he was he I am a recipient of his his point of view because he encouraged me so much. He pulled me into talk sessions. He gave me opportunities like all the time. And all I did was like constantly show up and raise my hand, yes. But this level of openness I'd not got from anyone else before. So Dan just lived and embodied who we want to be at all times. And that's why we had to honor him with this, uh, with this renaming of the scholarship fund. Any thoughts, Stu? So, so one of the themes of, of your keynote was Team Cloud Native. I, yes. You know, I, I think since you know the years I've been coming here, I was saying this year, after 18, 24 months, a quarter of the people I know changed jobs, including myself. Yep. If I go back the last five years, it's probably more like you know 60, 70 percent. You, totally. you, 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 you've changed jobs yep. and, and the like. So you know that community, employer, um, yep. many of us in the open source community. You contribute as part of your job, but yep. it people change and the leadership uh, mm -hmm. is important. So maybe speak a little bit to that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think to your point, right? We are team cloud native before we are, oh, I work at company X, Y, or Z. And that's no shade to the companies, none at all. In fact, it shows that they celebrate people who are part of this ecosystem as their primary identity. Uh, and I think that happens because in this community, paying it forward is the norm. And that sounds like a cliched thing to say, but as I was uh, sharing in my keynote, all sorts of people are doing things no one asked them to do just to make things more awesome here. I mean, Dan Pop agreed to build out cloud native TV. No one forced him to do it. You know, you, you've done so many great things from a, a media perspective, from a storytelling perspective. Again, you chose to do it and contribute, right? And I think there are so many people like that. Most of us are all like that. And that's why our identity comes from this community first. And the companies that celebrate that reap the rewards. I think the CNCF facilitates that though. Like being able to say like you have this space to be able to do these things. You have a community that's going to support you. 
you don't you didn't have that in other communities that were there you know so like this is a thing that i think that cncf nurtures to do that and it, we and we do it well Thank so you. i'm going to go back to the wait by the way time out <laughs> priyanka's dress amazing i mean you know like <laughs> yeah it was awesome so uh she's also wearing some amazing kicks so i don't know if you can see them so um so let's talk about uh, what are you looking forward to for this week what am I looking forward to this week? I mean, I'm really happy I'm done with all the biggest things I had to do for the show. So, yay, party time for me. <laughs> no, and I mean it in seriousness because, you know, this is the first time I have attended this show in person as the leader of CNCF before I was having a blast as a community member. So now I'm like, oh, my day one is gone. And what was I doing? First, I was keynoting. Then I was doing press and media. Then I was, you know, it just like... I was on a treadmill and tomorrow onwards what I hope to achieve is actually just immerse myself in community and hang out with people go to show different talks and there is I mean the keynotes I'll 100% be there for and this time I would have zero stress I'll just be chilling enjoying the show so that's major for me and then the attendee party I mean Who's not looking forward to having a party? I think this is the first party for most of us So yeah, those are some highlights yeah, so speak a little bit to, to the audience here. I was so excited. I bumped into a few people that are like relatively new to Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. It's their first time. Oftentimes, in the it's like, okay, how many people here is your first time? Yeah. So there are the the hallway track is back in full full steam. Uh, many of us, as you said, like tomorrow. Wait, yep. if somebody bumps into you, you might actually have a couple of minutes to talk to them. I not, know. I need to run to <laughs> seventeen meetings in a row. So th th that um, diversity of experience, uh, being able to help those entry people in to the community oh I think that's like one of the best parts right and I actually look at the composition of the folks who are here and as you said a lot of them uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know if they're first timers because they may have actually attended a bunch of the virtual ones but they're first timers of the in-person event and so many folks I'm meeting I'm like I kind of know you online but this is the first time I'm meeting you and that I think it's not just happening to me. It's happening amongst people quite a bit. And so that I've given like 15,000 hugs today, and I don't <laughs> want to stop. I'll, I'll keep I don't want to stop. <laughs> All day. Uh, free hugs. Free hugs. But if you have the green bracelet, which I don't have right now, which, by the way, the system's great. The green, yeah, it's right yes. there. Yeah, that's right it's there. so Shout nice, out. right? I saw somebody with the yellow one, and I was like, okay, I just know not to be like, uh, and it's perfect. It's perfect. But, um, sorry, yes, so I think a lot of us are meeting and feeling like we're all first-timers in a way. And that is a good thing because it's also going to reset our cultural experience of KubeCon, even though I've been there since, like, you know, I think the second one onwards. So everybody feels a little new right now, and my, my thing is to do what I did at the second KubeCon or third KubeCon, which is, hey, how are you? Let's hang. Tell me more. And it's going well so far. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Priyanka, we know you want to get out there. You've had a long day and all of that. <laughs> we want to give you back your evening. Thank you so much for being on the Daily Recap. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for watching. All right. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish it out. I want to just, uh, Stu, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hey. I'm a fan first uh, forever. It's been fun, man. Yeah, it, 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 it's excited. nice, you know, a little bit different format than right. the cube, yeah. you know, not not the rapid fire, you know, deep dive. It's it, 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 it quick with, with the people, but in and out and live. Yep. Uh, I, I, I love it. It's very organic. You get to be real. Um, you know, nice nice to see some guests and people I've known for years and, and some new people, as we said. This, this community is so welcoming. You know, we all know what it was like to have our first time there. Right. And... I tell you, that's always, you know, you know, I did a video on this when I left the cube, and it's like, can I put myself and empathize with the audience? You know, those of you watching remote and be like, if you've been to events or you haven't, been, you know, hey, we've all been there. It's all been the first time I attended a conference, the first time I spoke at a conference. You know, it's nervous, and yep. you know, it's okay. It's, and you it's, get and over you those. You want to encourage people to have yeah. those, you know, those those talks and have that. Hey, hey, Stu, how are you? You know what I'm saying? Because you know, there might be there might be somebody that wants to do something, right? And, and they don't, they feel shy. And they don't, you know, mm. they want to get into, them, get involved, and get really, you know, deep in a specific oh subject. And the, if you're the, not nurturing, the that, first time I wrote a blog right. and you hit publish, and you're yeah. like, oh my god, 
What if nobody sees it? But what if a lot of people see it? Yeah. <laughs> and what, what does that mean? <laughs> and on video, if some yeah. there, it's like, wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it is interesting. So, yeah, it, it, it's been a lot of fun to hang out. So thank you so much. Let's do this again, man. Yeah, a- right. absolutely. Hey, uh, I mean, Pop, you, you know, Red Hat's at a lot of these things, yeah. and, and I'll do it. Do, do I get the shameless plug, Yeah, too? I want your okay, shameless come plug. Come on, you know, off, cloud.redhat.com uh, is where you're the thing. If you, you want to see a lot from all, VJ. Joy over there, huh? all the stuff uh, we have, if you just Google, like, like Red Hat and, and KubeCon. And the other thing, um, the job board is back. So, you know, job. at the show, almost everybody here is hiring. We've all got tags. I personally have a, a couple of recs. So um, if you're interested in this space, you know, dive in. The tip is, you know, when you look through that and you're like, oh boy, it seems a little bit overwhelming. It's like, okay, well, how much of it do you know? And yeah, you can pick up some of these things. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, the expert on Kubernetes yep. and, you know, all these things. So, you know, we, you, you can learn because um, there's nobody that has 10 years experience with Kubernetes. No. No, even though even though there was an article, somebody was asking for that, which which is great. But anyway, that's for another show. So, Stu, thank you so much for being on the show, all of our guests today, and um, have a great day. Enjoy KubeCon. I know I'm going to do for the rest of the week, and I'm sure Stu is as well. Thank you all for joining the uh, Cloud Native TV.